So uh, Ilya returned to, to skating with him. Just how, how happy are you that he's building a line? Very happy. We miss him. Uh, and that means he may be, it, be able to integrate into practice immediately after the skate. I, I didn't find out yet how that went, um, but very good news. Very happy for him. He's uh, a big part of what we're doing here. As far as Rasmus Eskin goes, he, he's very, as you were saying the other day, he's very frank about his struggles, and, or what he struggles, what, he, you know, what he's going through and so forth, and he addresses it. I mean, he mentioned the details in his game had slipped. I mean, it seemed like those details were pretty good on Saturday. But just what kind of bounce back did you see from him Saturday? I thought he was real good, uh, as you said, and, and he mentioned his details were good. But he, he's, I mean, these guys are young players, and they haven't had, there's a lot of guys that haven't had a lot of games at this level, uh, experience-wise. So you're going to go through natural ups and downs and um, highs and lows, and when you struggle, it's going to be probably the first time you struggle in one area or another area, maybe in your career. Um, and you got to learn to deal with it, and that's part of maturing as a player. So, you, you know, there's nothing that Aspie has gone through that should be alarming uh, as far as any adversity. I mean, the, the players are going to face adversity, and they're going to have to go through it and learn how to handle it to become an experienced NHL player. And I think that's all we've, we're, we're uh, uh, seeing out of Aspie. This is making him better, and he learning to streamline his game to his skill set at this level within the context of what we need as a team. And um, he dialed in pretty good the other night. When you see this Kings roster, what stands out to you about his first time facing him this year at all? Well, they're, they are certainly a team. I mean, every team in this league you have to respect. And they, they, play, a, they play a pretty heavy game, um, very – Straightforward. I think they've got great leadership. I think they're uh, have very simplified, powerful structure to their game. Um, we faced the, a team the other night that played very structured against us, two game set in Pittsburgh. I would say it's going to be similar to that, with probably a little bit more heavier, uh, you know, defensemen and physical play, specifically down low, uh, which would be our offensive zone. But um, you know, you. you you approach it with the respect uh, that you should of every team in this league. Uh, every team you play is a good team and a capable team, and this is no different. Talking to Paterka, he mentioned that his game away from the puck is the area that he's continued to try to adjust to in the NHL, not only offensively but defensively. How have you seen the growth from him when it comes to the offensive side of the game and making sure that he's in spots to get the puck with his line mates and yeah, they, that line has developed chemistry. I, I you know, I'd watch those players, uh, JJ and, and Quinter, last year a lot in the American League. Obviously, we had Dylan here, and, and it was it was something that I wanted to get those three together, but I didn't want to do it at the start of the year. And it was because JJ and, and Quinter both had to work on certain things just to get acclimated uh, to a certain degree. Uh, within the context of the league, the pace of the game, the experience of the players around them, uh, f on our team and the, and the other team, and and uh, I think JJ, it, that process has been accelerated. He's been engaged in it very well. He came in here with an open mind of okay. Um, I think a couple games last year helped him to, to get a visual. That when he gets into this league, he's going to have to learn a lot, and the faster he can learn, the better. And he's he's really. He said that as an objective, as a, uh, and that's helped him uh, the rapid growth rate, and, and that's still rapid right now, which is which is phenomenal. Him, uh, Dylan, and and Quinter by virtue of their age, and and you know, not yet an experience level, their growth rate is huge, uh, and they're engaged in that growth. Very makes it very nice for us as coaches. Thinking back to those two games last year, it seemed like he was trying to skate 100 miles an hour every time he had the puck and got himself in some bad some bad ice. This year, there's a lot more patience in his game, and he's really good at, at kind of slowing the play down, knowing when to look for his line mates. How did you think that that, tra that development really started last year in Rochester? And it's not easy to do that and come to the NHL when the speed is obviously a lot higher. Than yeah, what was important last year, what we wanted to do was give him some hindsight of being in the NHL. And we didn't feel, you know, 
we felt Rochester was the best spot for him, but part of the, his development was getting an NHL game or two or you know whatever we could get him to have some hindsight and going into an off season, going into, and he struggled when he was up last year, which was good. Um, I think you know you, you you have a young guy struggle and you go into a room like this as a coach and everybody's worried about it, and the coach you're like, this is great, we want him. We he's going to have to struggle at some point in his career be, because he just hasn't played at that level of the, the players. So. Uh, he struggled last year. I felt. Uh, I think he would probably agree, and that was a, that gave him a lot of hindsight to the, the, how much he had to prepare for this year. And he he's done a great job in in that. I know you've been asked this many times for us that don't get a chance to see face to face the step that Darlene has taken this year after taking many 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 steps. What has elevated him to pretty elite status right now? Yeah, he, he is elite status. I mean, it's it's special uh, on a nightly basis to watch him. Um, a lot. He's a very determined guy, and he's an ultra competitive person and player. Uh, now you're seeing him uh, breathe a little bit, where all of the adversity that he went through is now, as I've mentioned, it's now experience. It's given him confidence. Uh, all that adversity he faced last year was could put a seed of doubt in his mind. Now he's bigger. He's built himself bigger and stronger. Natural growth. Obviously, he's only 22 years old, so everybody knows from 18 to 22 how much strength, physical strength, these guys can put on. Hockey strength, physical strength, weight. He that the accumulation of that has helped him bounce players around uh, by himself more time and space with strength. Uh, shed a shed a guy that's trying to hit him, um, and and that. Basically, he, he broke through a threshold of that, and all those potentially negative experiences he felt were negative in his career, realizing that those were actually positive ones. Those were, those were valuable experience to, uh, to learn from, and he's learned from it. And now he walks into a game, and he, he fully believes and knows he can Im- impact outcome on a positive sense. Um, he's killing plays faster defensively. He, he, last year we challenged him to use his hockey sense in the defensive zone, uh, and he's, he's really matured in that regard. He's tough to beat defensively because we've, you know, he's not worried about a system. He's using his, his hockey sense much, much more. And obviously, we play a system, but, but uh, that's secondary to, to what we feel is, is incredible hockey sense. When it comes to Casey's opportunity on the top line, obviously he has a lot of chemistry with Tage and Chuck, but where do you draw the line, and especially giving feedback between him like his game and the role you need him to fill in Jeff's absence? Uh, that's a tricky one. Um, and the nice part is Tuck and Thompson have a really huge respect for Casey, his skill, him as a worker, as a teammate, as a competitive guy. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to overcoach the situation. I, I, you have to trust. I, I watch Casey work every day um, and compete every day. And, and obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're together as a team every day. Um, to me, this is a great opportunity for Casey to just uh, embrace and enjoy. Um, and, and hopefully it helps him pull out of what has been a, a real psychological challenge for him, if not a physical one. Um, we all expect Casey to produce more than he has, um, and that has a psychological uh, burden to him as, as that goes along. Hopefully he can break through that and just, uh, just play. He's put a lot of work in. Um, I, I have a lot of faith in him as a, as a coach. As a result of the work, he's going to break through, and hopefully this helps him break through. Look at him and Tage having reverse journeys between center and wing. Do you think there is something for Tage to learn with how Casey handles the faceoff? Uh, there's, you know, Tage, Tage learns from anything, anybody, any situation. Uh, most great players do and players that are becoming, you know, better and better. So, yes, I think that's an, that's an easy one uh, as, a, as a trait. Tage learns from just about anybody he can learn from. So he's picking up stuff. If Casey's taking a draw, he's definitely conversing with him and picking things up on that. I'm curious about Jack Quinn's makeup because... You know, as in minor hockey, he plays double A forever, finally makes triple A, takes off. OHL finally makes it. Next year, 50 goals. AHL, same thing. Bit of an adjustment, really takes off. NHL, you've seen a little bit. 
what do you make of that? Is it something with his makeup, the way he sees the game, approaches the game? Yeah, it's with his makeup, no question. Uh, he, he is willing to work, willing to sacrifice for future. Uh, and he, he's always, you know, there's lots of incredible players in youth hockey and even drafted players that never make it to the NHL. And, and lots of times those players don't make it because they think they've already arrived. And so a guy that never arrived, like you said, he played double A and then didn't make a triple A, didn't make major junior, he's never arrived. That's a mentality. I need to do more. And so his mentality every day is I need to do more. I need to get better. I need to find ways to get better. Not I've arrived. And it's still that way. And you look around the league, the, the best players in the league, I mean the highest elite players in our league, that's the mentality they have. They know they're great, but they're always looking for more. And they have an appetite for more, so a focus. And that's Tage Thompson, that's Rasmus Dahlin, that's it's all the best players. Um, and the guys that uh, struggle uh, typically don't have that approach. So, so Quinter is... He, he's very determined, and he is willing to sacrifice to work for future success. Tom, will you have the same 16? Uh, we, I can't even remember, Paul, with who we had in games the other day. and so Clay? will stay in. Yeah, Clay will stay in. And he's been real good for us, for the guys from Jimmy. I mean, he's been great for us. So, yep.